Hey everybody. Today we are going to do a final update on this $5 eMachines part system. As you can see I got everything else installed and it's running Windows 7 now. Running just fantastic. Have 2 gigs of memory DDR400 installed and um, I got a 400 gig Seagate ID hard drive in there. It came out of a recent system that I acquired. I installed two e-machine style drives on the front. You got your DVD ROM and a DVD burner below that. Pretty much the same kind of configuration I have on Mid Tower Lux. And I got two USB ports down there to use with other devices. This thing had a bezel for a card reader, but it was missing a card reader, but I didn't have any more e-machines card readers laying around, so I had to take it out. And I swapped out the blower piece that you know has your audio jacks. I swapped out for one that has audio jacks and two USB ports to compensate for that. Now, um, basically, I figured out why this thing acted the way it did and how it ended up being a $5 part system. If you're seeing this is for the first time, basically, what it did is um, when I got it, basically, you could plug it in and um, start it up. It only stay on for about 10 or 15 seconds and then it's mysteriously going to suspend state or sleep mode. And it will no longer respond. You can press the power button, you can press the keyboard keys and that kind of stuff. It just would not respond. So I guess the people that go with computer works deemed it as, you know, a bad motherboard. And just put a price tag of $9.99 on the thing and then they marked it down to $4.99. And of course I picked it up real quick at that price and this thing sat in my stack of computers for who knows how many months. Um, you know, I thought the motherboard was so, sort of in bad standing too, but basically I managed to figure things out. And what I did was I quickly, you know, pressed F2 to get into the BIOS and then quickly mouse and hit, you know, load optimize settings and then really quickly go to save and exit setup to save changes for the thing went into suspend mode. And then that was, then that got it to stay on. But I noticed, um, I think, I don't, I don't know if I swapped the CMOS battery in the video or not, but the CMOS battery was bad. And I figured it, so it, it told me why it was doing this. Basically, I believe one of two things happened with this thing. Either the BIOS image that was originally applied to the motherboard had some defective code in it, or the BIOS had got corrupted somehow. So there was some bad entries in the um, power options. So when this thing, you know, loses you know, all settings and it loads, you know, its default settings from a CMOS checksum error, it would just go into spin mode due to, you know, an error in the settings. So, yeah. After I changed up the CMOS battery, I went ahead and, you know, quickly got it out of that state by loading the optimized settings. You know, put the system together. The fresh CMOS battery, installed the hardware, and loaded Windows 7, you know, all that good stuff. And the way I solved the problem for good is I went to eMachines web e uh, website and downloaded an, a um, BIOS update for this thing. And I applied the BIOS and I purposely pulled out the CMOS battery, you know, with the system unplugged and everything, pulled it out, held the power button in to make sure that it lost all CMOS settings. And then I plugged it back in, you know, I put the CMOS battery in, then put, then plugged it back in, started up. No more suspicious suspending. It stayed running like it's supposed to. Even fresh out of a CMOS checksum error, it stayed running. So at least now I can be rest assured that this thing will not fail in that sort of way. And before I wrap up this video, I want to talk about another thing about these particular systems. Pretty much all the eMachines computers that use the MSI MS7207 motherboard. This motherboard is hit or miss for a reason. It has the NVIDIA GeForce 6100LE Northridge, which is prone to running very hot. And I've gotten several dead e machines over the years with those motherboards. You can see there's three on my motherboard wall of shame. Um, two of them were pretty much dead on arrival as part systems, and the other failed later in the field. And um, what happens is this Norbridge chip gets so hot that the solder under the, you know, it's, it's a um, ball grid array 
package on your motherboard that's soldered to your motherboard and those little solder balls cracks form in them and what happens is that heat you know you turn the computer on things get hot you turn it off it cools down you get this cycle over and over again this expanding and contra contracting and uh, re um, eventually cause these cracks to form and cause your motherboard to play dead now sometimes you can you might be able to get by with reflowing it basically if you press down your Norbridge chip and then press the power button on your reset button on your computer and it posts then you can probably get by with reflow and actually have the system last for a pretty good while but if it's already dead and you reflow it it may not last another month if even that if you're lucky but I've noticed that when this e-machine came to me it had this heatsink well not not the exact same fan I did swap fans when I swapped the coolers but um the way this heatsink installs the fans are horizontal rather than vertical now if you look carefully at this motherboard you can see that you can basically see how this Norbridge chip is you know the, the heatsink is you got vertical fans basically it's, it's designed to catch air from the CPU cooler so, you know your CPU fan blows in air some air goes up some air goes down and this heat sink is designed to catch air that's going down but when you have a cooler like this in there that's blowing horizontally you got air going toward the left toward your VRM which is not bad but you know you got air going toward your memory but generally in many cases these two things don't need a whole lot of cooling not as much as your Norbridge heat sink does now if you got a case like you know let's say the Mid-Tire Deluxe it has a side panel fan that blows air toward your Norbridge heat sink it doesn't matter what kind of cooler you have I mean like an, for example this system does not have a CPU cooler this has a water block to a water cooling system so you know and I'll come back to this in a moment because I want to talk a little more about that design but basically in e-machines with most of these particular systems with these MS7207 motherboards and I believe it applies for all the other ones I've gotten too they had you know socket 939 AMD processors with this particular heatsink so you have air blowing vertically out of the CPU core but nothing getting down here to this Northbridge chip which right now I can touch it I mean it's hot but it's not burning my finger hot but I mean before changing out this heatsink if I touch my finger on that heatsink it was like instant burn hot I mean it was extremely hot to the touch now I'm going to grab my thermometer and we're going to see how hot that thing is right now. Just to give you an idea of how hot these these Northbridge chips run. I need to switch this to Celsius. Now this guy here is not 100% accurate, I've noticed. It's saying 48.8 degrees Celsius or 49 degrees Celsius. Which I know it's hotter than that to the touch. I'm going to assume between 50 and 55 degrees Celsius. Which, you know, these chips do run pretty hot. But the thing is, just think about it. You know, many of these e-machines out there had these kinds of coolers blowing horizontally out. And it's not vertically out. This guy's getting no air, so it's not getting cooled, so it runs much hotter. And when you don't cool your NVIDIA GeForce 6100 series chips properly, or many of the GeForce Norbridge chips, for that matter, you would get the condition where the um, where the little solder balls crack and your motherboard fails. So that would probably explain why many of these boards had so many failures. Another reason would typically be the kind of thermal compound used. That affected many of the FIC um, motherboards that were used by e-machines. I don't remember the model off the top of my head, but e-machines use a socket 754 motherboard with the G4 6100 series chipset. Again, it was made by FIC if I didn't mention. It used what I like to call um, bubble gum, thermal transfer material and not thermal paste. In this instance, MSI used thermal paste on pretty much everything, which is good. 
because I mean you had the proper thermal transfer but you just didn't have the proper cooling so if you find an e-machine like this in for service or if you own one of these I would suggest switching out your CPU cooler for one like this that you know is, is vertical the the fins are vertical in line with the mounting brackets so that way your CPU core is also cooling your Northbridge heatsink. And just to give you an idea how hot some of these things have gotten, um, one of those motherboards up there, the Northbridge heatsink had gotten so hot that it was no longer black. The um, the metal had turned. It, it actually lightened. It actually got lighter in color due to due to the excessive heat. So it's very important that, you know, in a system like this, you have a proper cooler installed. But not to mention this CPU cooler here is doing a better job of cooling the CPU. Because it's bigger. Now I'm going to talk about the entire Lux one more time. The motherboard that's in this system is an Ace Rock 890FX Deluxe 4. And these Deluxe Series motherboards came with, uh, came with a really nice optional feature out of the box. They included a little bitty fan that you can attach to the heat pipe that's over the VRMs. Now this motherboard has a heat pipe that covers the VRMs and the North Bridge. So if you have a water cooling system or a vertical CPU core like this, you can attach that little fan and it will help cool your VRMs and your um, North Bridge chip. So very, very smart thinking on behalf of Ace Rock. And, um, the fan they included, it seems to be decent quality. It hasn't failed on me after running for over two years, non-stop. I mean, it's, I mean, it's smart design, I must say. So, anyways, back to the e-machines. In regards to the um, BIOS issue that is now fixed with the BIOS update, so, you know, it makes me wonder how many e-machines computers came with this motherboard with that messed up BIOS release if it was actually a um, mess up BIOS revision. So just think, you know, all these systems that may be out there in service or, you know, wherever, CMOS battery dies, motherboard plays dead. <laughs> it goes into suspend. Kinda crazy. But anyways, this system is good to go. So two things I mentioned with this motherboard. If you're, um, if you're MS7207 E-Machines motherboard, like so, I could go to sleep after 10 seconds of being powered on. Um, that's I mentioned how you can fix it, which I did do a video about that already. And also, if you have one of these systems and you have a CPU core like this, which is you know has which has horizontal fins, swap it out for a vertical biased one to cool your Northbridge better. So, anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask, and thanks for watching.